Now this next video is one long overdue. You may wonder why I'm looking over this case. Uh, this case may play a very important role in the next computer we're going to be built. Hello everybody, welcome to Builder By. I'm your host Gil Boyd. And uh, we're gonna do a video now about if I were gonna build a Threadripper 3, where do I start? Okay, that question is kind of as broad as it is long. Uh, we've had a lot of questions about a Threadripper 3, about what do I do, how do I do, and uh, where do I go for information. So. I think the first place to do um, our best research is we're going to go to AMD. We're going to take a look at their website because we're looking at the processor, which is a Threadripper 3. We're going to find three processors. After we find those three processors, then we need to look at the chipset. Once we've figured out what the chipset is, then we're going to go look at motherboards. AMD Threadripper 1, 2, 3. And we're looking for Ryzen. And we're looking right here, third generation Ryzen Threadripper. We're going to pick the first one it shows us, a 3970. And what we want to find is desktop and yes the Threadripper Pro has been announced but we don't know enough about it to do much research on it so it's uh, it's a big deal but uh, I think it's too uh, early to be talking about it okay the third generation Ryzen Threadripper there's a good video there about the architecture what we're looking for is a listing of the three processors so this is going to take us to the first one which will take us to the second one which will take us to the third one so we'll go ahead and look at the first processor which is 3970 we can look at the specifications and what we're really after after the 3970 is we want to see what other ones are available a 3990 and a 3960 now this has a 2990 listed but we're interested in these three the 3970 the 3990 and the 3960 we know the processors are available that there's three what we need to do now is take a look at the chipset this is a TRX 40 so we're going to do a search on that take a look and see what's available so we'll bring up another browser window all right, TRX-40 motherboards, and again, the specifications. So we get an idea. We've got 88 PCI Express lanes. And I think the question comes up about, do I build an X399 or do I build a TRX-40? I can make a case for the um, X399. Once you understand resource allocation, which we've done a lot of, uh, all the things you can do with PCI Express 3 on a high-end desktop, specifically on an X399. Now, some of that still applies on an X299. That's another video. We'll get to it another time because we had some questions about this. But this is specifically about AMD. We've made a case for the X399 on if I were building a computer, what I would build because your RAM, motherboard, and processor. That still applies with this for a TRX40. Again, you're talking RAM, motherboard, and processor. Now, the big difference in the two, PCI Express 3 versus PCI Express 4. You do have more resources, but you still have two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots. So those things are limited. When you start talking about PLX chips, then you're talking a workstation. And right now, we don't have a workstation motherboard on an AMD platform. On the Intel, yes, we do. But we're not talking about PLX chips. And what is a PLX chip? A PLX chip allows us to take so many resources, bridge it, and give us more resources. In other words, we have X amount of uh, slots, X amount of PCI Express resources, and with a PLX chip that bridges that, we're able to add or duplicate those resources so we can put more stuff on the motherboard, which is pretty cool. But in terms of what we're doing with PCI Express 3 versus PCI Express 4, your motherboard chipset is the foundation. So what we want to do now, now that we know what the chipset is we're looking for, I'm going to suggest we go to PC Part Picker and go through that next level. Now, I need to know what the chipset is, PC part picker will identify not by the chipset, but by the socket, which is TRX. And again, you have to remember, none of this stuff is bulletproof, but it's a good place to start. We know the processor, of which there's three. We know the chipset now, so we need to see the motherboards that are available. And there's a lot of them. So we're going to look at System Builder up here in the upper left. Now, since we're on a new machine, this machine will not have memory of anything we've done in searches in the past. So this is going to be a fresh search that we're getting ready to do. We're not going to pick the CPU first. That's still an item in play. What we want to do is take a look at the motherboards. So let's scroll down. We're going to choose a motherboard. We're going to click on that. Scroll down. We're going to look on the left. We're not looking by brand. We're looking by socket. So there's TR4 and TRX4. So we're going to pick STRX4. And we should see about 13 boards. And it says there's 14. Okay. That's a new one on me. 14 motherboards. Now at this point, I'm going to cut to the chase. Uh, when I looked at this last time, there were 13 boards. This now says there's 14. Okay. Of those 14 boards, of the 13 that I was aware of, five of those boards include some form of a uh, NVMe quad card. Pretty cool, huh? I will say there is one motherboard that's on the list that does not have a quad card that allows you to put five NVMe drives on the motherboard. That happens to be an ASUS board. How do I know that? 
I've looked at every one of these. So what I'm going to do is cut to the chase with those five and tell you that there's only one board on this list that has not only a PCI Express 4 NVMe quad card, but it also includes a PCI Express 3 Thunderbolt card, which means there's BIOS support for it. That's the board we're going to look at. We're going to cut to the chase and go to Gigabyte, and the board we're looking at is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare. Now, before you get all choked up about the price of this motherboard, remember there's two cards in that, and that so that bundle of about $620, roughly half of that are those two add-in cards. So that makes that motherboard not too expensive if half of it is two add-in cards. Have to keep that in mind. So as we look at that board, probably the best picture we would have would be at Newegg. Information at B&H should be good. Uh, let's take a look on Amazon. Now, the reason I want to go to Amazon to look at this board, you pay a premium for this feature, but this feature is very important. Because of the way these motherboards are bundled now, even though you have to pay a premium buying it from Amazon, it's like insurance. For that 30 days, if you have any problems with that motherboard, whew, you can send it back and get another one. Now, when we build, we suit up. I got the gloves on. I got the anti-static strap because ESD, electrostatic discharge, is a real bad issue. Uh, some of the ASUS boards talk about addressing that with uh, better isolation, but still, glove up, suit up. So let's take a look at that board. Now the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare, if you'll notice we have four, four slots. Now you have to remember, these four 16-lane slots are 16-lane slots mechanically. Only two are 16-lane and two are 8-lane electrically. That's an important distinction. And then you've got one single lane slot in there. And of course, it'll hold three NVMe drives. Now, if I were going to build a machine, I would get the foundation with the correct chipset. We still need to go back and pick a processor. This is the motherboard I'd go with. So I'm going to go back and let's do some more work at PC Part Picker. So PC Part Picker, I'm going to add that board to the list. And we have one item on here. Now, we need to choose a cooler. We need to choose a CPU. I'm going to cut to the chase here again on the cooler. RAM, motherboard, and processor, those are your three key elements, but you've got to have a cooler. So the cooler I'm going to recommend is the Noctua. It's the same thing we were using on the uh, Threadrippers, Threadripper 2s. It was great. It's air-cooled. It'll fit in some of these larger cases. And uh, I'm going to tell you the hardest thing we've had looking for is probably going to be the case, and we're going to be looking at about three or four different cases because the format to build a Threadripper 3 is XLATX. Go looking for an XLATX case. Not a lot of options out there. And those cases that I have found are beasts. Uh, but we're going to look at some and we'll examine them for what they are and for what they're not and uh, see what we think of them. But they fill up a room. The case I have sitting up here by me is the case that I will compare all the others by. And if you're wondering what this case is, this is a Corsair 750D Airflow. Already got a video up on that. And for those that make a big deal about the wiring inside, None of this stuff is permanent. Everything is temporary. We build it. We make it work. Then we take it apart and do something else, like the power supply that's in this case. It's got an EVGA. It's 1,000 watt, but it's EVGA. They've changed their manufacturer, so we'll uh, probably pop this out and put something else in it, which means all the wiring harness and everything comes out. We start over with that. Uh, but the motherboard processor is probably going to stay in this case. It's a heavy case as is, but this is the one that we're going to compare the other cases by. So let's go back. So let's go ahead and add a cooler, and I'm just going to cut to the chase. We're going to go to Noctua. Two things to remember. One, we like to keep it simple, and two, we like bang for the buck. Even when you're building a high-end desktop like this, you still want bang for the buck. The one we're going to go for is the TR4, which is the top one, 14S. We're going to add that. Now, I want to interject right now. This comes with one fan. You can put a secondary fan on there. The clip for the secondary fan comes with a cooler, so there's nothing else you got to buy except that one fan. Uh, what we may do is uh, I'll put the information up in the description of the video so you'll have all this stuff. But that's the cooler we would go with. Now, if you were using a rack mount case and you're using four units, that cooler is too tall. You'd have to go with a smaller one that will fit in a four-unit case. This cooler would require a five-unit case, which is a little odd. Just an FYI. Okay, so right now we have the cooler, we have the motherboard, we got to pick a CPU. And I would say for the CPU, this right now is a tough call because you want to get on the platform. So uh, I don't know if I would recommend the 3960 or the 3970. Uh, but if I were building, my personal preference, I would say the 3970. It's right in the middle. 
Now, somebody asked the question is about the motherboards. Are they going to get any less expensive? I don't see that happening. Even though we've got the Pro coming out, I think the thing you may see price fluctuations on will be the NVMe drives. And we go from PCI Express 3 to PCI Express 4. Motherboards, I don't think, are going to fluctuate. What we might see happen, and we've seen it in the past, but it's a kind of a toss-up because of what's going on in the world right now, is the deals where they bundle with motherboard and processor. So you might watch for some of those. Occasionally, you'll see a deal that's just too good to pass up. You just have to watch. So let's go back. So for Grins, if we were to go ahead and put in this list, let's say the 3960. What I'm trying to do is making a case for a TRX40 to build a Threadripper 3 because you want to get on the platform and your platform and your foundation is your motherboard. So once the motherboard is solid, the question is how far do you go with the processor? The question is then how far do you go with the RAM? With the, uh, another distinction with the X399 versus the TRX40, how much RAM can you put on? 256 gigs of RAM versus, yeah, that's a lot of RAM. So I'm just saying, what I would do and what we need to do now is go take a look at the motherboard manual and say, okay, we've got eight slots. What's the least amount of RAM and what's the most amount of RAM that motherboard supports? Because what we want to look at is can we go say maybe dual channel by putting in two sticks? What is the multiplier for those two sticks? Because we want to put something on that we can add to that we don't have to pull out and start all over with. So say if we start with say 16 gigs of RAM, that's two 8 gig sticks. 8 times 8 would be 64. That would be the max you could go. If you put in two 16 gig sticks, two 32s, I'm just saying do the math. See what works best for you. But if you can do dual channel just to get this thing up and running, RAM is something you can always add later. And as far as your video card, just get something in there that will make this thing work. The, pro the point of it is get on the platform. So your motherboard, your processor, motherboard is the key. That's a chipset. Processor number two, you've got to have a CUDA. We've listed that. And then the RAM. Now, the RAM I would recommend is still the low profile stuff. If you want to get into some of the high performance stuff, then bang for the buck goes out the window. But we're talking about RAM that just runs, that we can get started with LPX. That way it slides just right under the cooler. Slide those fans up a little bit, and your, your clearance is good. If you should ever decide to fill all those slots, not saying you will, but you might. You never know. So with these items, if we go to memory, and I'm going to cut to the chase for uh, low-profile memory, and the easiest to find is going to be the Corsair. You know, it's funny, ever since we started using Corsair, we started with a Corsair Vengeance. I think it was on the DDR3 and uh, built a lot of machines with DDR3 from Corsair Vengeance. We're still using Corsair Vengeance. It's not the high performance. It's not like buying some of the, uh, oh, like the G-Skill that's uh, made with the Samsung b RAM, but, you know, it's not at a premium. You have to decide, again, bang for the buck, do you want quantity or do you want speed? Um, right now, we're going to try to build a machine that's going to have quantity. How much RAM can we get in? Maybe a, that may be an interesting uh, a video. We'll piece it out. So hopefully you can watch the parts you want. If you can watch the whole thing, then it'll be in pieces where you'll see it all the way through. But we're going to start with cases, and that's coming up soon. Back to the parts. So if we pick low profile, and we're looking at a quantity of, say, uh, two 8-gig sticks, Let's try, yeah, that's low profile. Let's try that. And what we're looking at now, and I'm going to go to the bottom of this, that's what it's going to cost to get into this machine, a couple of thousand dollars. And the point of this is, is so you can do your what ifs. Now, this is not bulletproof, but it's a great place to start. And I've tried to give you some information and some insight to save you some time that if you're looking for a card or if you're looking for a motherboard, you'll get a better idea of what you're after. Some of the stuff that details things I've told you, the only way you find that out is if you research every single motherboard. And we looked at all of them except for one. I'm going to have to go back through the list again and figure it out. But as we go forward, but I'm really excited about this because if I were going to build one, this is the path I would go. And this is how I'd choose it. So let's go over to um, Amazon's site and let's take this information, which is a Gigabyte TRX40 designator. Let's go do a search on that, and we're going to go to Gigabyte's site for that board. And what we want to do is go to Support. We're going to download the manual. We need the regular manual. Here we are. Okay, here's our slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, what we need to find... Okay, here we are. We're looking for memory. Installing the memory. Quad channel configuration. Okay, the memory configuration, even though we have eight slots, we're still quad channel. So what we want to do is look and see if we can go dual channel to get the board up and running. And that's why we're looking at the manual. Specificity. 
So to get two modules, DDR4A2 and DDR4B2 according to the manual. DDR4A2 would be the second one and DDR4B2. So on the right, memory with the Threadripper 3 sets up just the same way as the Threadripper 2. CPU would be in the middle. So A2 and B2 according to this layout. DDR4, A2 and B2. So in that configuration, we've got uh, on the second one and on the last one where the memory goes, so we will not have any memory underneath the uh, CPU cooler. But if we do bump up against it, just slide the fan up a little bit, we're clear. So we can put in two sticks of memory in there. It should boot without any problem, according to the manual. And if we can put in two 8 gig sticks, you've got the potential to go to 64 gigs. That's a pretty good deal. Okay, let's go back over to the uh, system builder. So we've got CPU, cooler, motherboard, and memory. Now, everything else, I guess, is probably a point for conjecture. But the point of this is, if I were going to build a Threadripper 3, which is a TRX-40 motherboard, these are the basic components I would start with. And then I would build on that. Next video we're going to be doing about this build is going to be about the cases like we mentioned. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll stick with us. And I think you guys are amazing. And next video.